The music world moves fast. Want to stay up to date on the latest albums and get in-depth examinations with the artists? Check out Consequence of Sound, the podcast. Bite-sized album reviews for the music fan on the go who wants to stay in the know, and much more. Subscribe to the series on iTunes or your favorite podcast provider and let the writers of Consequence of Sound steer you right. Check it out at consequenceofsound.net slash COS podcast. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, Wherever you're listening from today, I hope you hit the subscribe button, whether you're checking us out on Spotify, on YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you download your favorite podcasts from. We do put out uh, multiple interviews every single week here. I'm Kyle Meredith. My guest for the second time this year, Michael McDonald. This time, we're talking about his brand new Christmas record, Season of Peace, The Christmas Collection, which is a sort of a greatest hits of all of his Christmas compilations, though it does have a new song on it, too, and that's a collaboration with Jake Shimabukuro. We'll talk about covering the classics and writing his own, as well as painting the artwork for this compilation, and how Christmas to him is a call for peace. One of my favorite fellas to talk to, it's Kyle Meredith with Michael McDonald. Hey, Kyle. So we'll be concentrating this time, uh, doing a little bit of the Christmas talk that we didn't get to uh, get around to last time. Season of Peace, the Christmas collection. So this is, uh, it, it's sort of the greatest hits, plus a new one, right? Right, right. We, uh, I, I was uh, uh, in Hawaii and uh, got a chance to hook up with uh, Jake Shimabukura, and uh, I, I did a little work on, on a record he's got coming out. So it, just on the fly, he was nice enough to, we were just sitting around in the studio jamming and for, the nature of these sessions was they were pretty live. They were just me and him playing uh, ukulele and, and me singing and on a couple of songs. So we, I, I threw him a little uh, version of Winter Wonderland that I play on the ukulele and he played along with me on it and was nice enough to, to, to record it with me. So we decided that would be fun to put on the Christmas record. You know, I mean, you're, you're a master in your own sense at a lot of things, but uh, I, I feel like I would be intimidated if I was holding a ukulele next to Jake Shimabukuro because it's like <laughs> the world's best. Oh, yeah, totally. I, I, I told him that. I said, you know, we're making history here today. We, we have the, the world's greatest master of ukulele uh, and the world's crappiest ukulele player <laughs> on the same record. You know? uh, it's a cool little version. I really did enjoy it. And, it, and it, it nice that it adds to the uh, the whole collection, which, you know, you, you've had some great notoriety for, you know, in this sort of uh, in, the, in the holiday fashion. What brought you to that style and subject and, and made you want to, like, dive into a place that had been dove into many times before my many different people um you know i think uh, not much besides the fact that i always enjoyed christmas albums so i always kind of wanted to do one you know uh probably since i grew up you know since i when i was a kid listening to nat king cole's christmas album and uh, sinatra's album and you know people like that uh, over the years uh, you know i always thought oh it'd be fun to try my hand at a christmas record we were lucky in the sense that uh, in our first deal with uh, mca Nashville, uh, Tony Brown was an executive producer, and he allowed us to write some new material, which typically when you're an artist and you're doing a Christmas record, they really want you to stick with the, the, the well-known uh, Christmas songs, you know. Right. So uh, uh, Tony was nice enough to let us write some stuff, and, and we wound up writing a, a good portion of, of our, our first record, which is is part of this compilation. Uh, and uh, and then we did some Christmas classic, different arrangements of older Christmas songs that everybody knows. But uh, it was fun to be able to get our, uh, take a shot at writing our own uh, Christmas music. And, uh, and that's kind of what makes it fun when we go out and play the, during the Christmas season. We add some of those songs to the set, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, yeah. fun to, it's fun to play something different. You know? it, it would seem to me, as an artist, that maybe that's like the holy grail of of what you might strive for because you know you can have success through your career and and your hits will come and go uh, but it seems like if you could land a Christmas classic you know that's going to stick around forever you're like your life is made like you just get to sit back on Easy Street <laughs> from that point that's right I, I've often wished that I had written Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer <laughs> believe. <laughs> Oh, it it is cool stuff, and and you do add even some great flavor to some of the old ones, and and I guess that's got to be 
sort of like what you would aim for too. I mean, you know, I was listening back to one of them, and you know, you have the uh, White Christmas and uh, Winter Wonderland, and, and it starts sort of traditional, but then you hit that jam right at the end, and that's that's like the great unexpected moments. Like, I guess that's what you'd want to strive for. Yeah, no, it, it, it's fun, you know, because it's it's feel good music that it's you know by definition, you know, and uh, so it's uh, it, it's fun to do those things and kind of reinvent some of the old stuff too. Like you say, it's it's a lot of fun. Yes. Now the uh, the cover, uh, I read that you painted the. Uh, the album cover to this one, right? Yeah, it's a, it's actually a pastel chalk drawing that I did, you know, uh, for one of the tours we did years back. It was, you know, it's kind of primitive, but <laughs> I, uh, you know, we, we thought, well, we, you know, the typical thing with a Christmas album is you're already late by the time you start it, you know, <laughs> right. uh, because you have to do them in like by July, you have to hand it in, you know. So we didn't have any photos that we hadn't already used. And we kind of thought, well, no, we can just use that old poster. Uh, so that kind of how, that's how it became the, the cover of the album, you know. Yeah, it's kind of nice though. It, it you know it paints a nice picture uh, metaphorically too that uh, you know of the season. But there's something always about Christmas paintings that have sort of a darkness to them, and I'm not sure how that comes out. But it's 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 like there's a tint of it in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I, I you know the, the message is for me at the holidays is always uh, you know let's not uh, let's not forget the word peace and and you know not and and, and the idea of peace. You know that's uh, it seems like you know it, 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 everything you know uh, has its season and uh right now we're we're, we're you know we're entering a, an era where the word peace does you don't hear it banded around that much you know these days it seems like uh you hear the war the, the word uh the idea of being more aggressive and being you know peace seems to be out of fashion at mm-hmm. this point i guess is what i'm saying and, and i hate to see that happen because ultimately what else is there in terms of uh, you know whatever we might strive for as, as a humanity uh if we're not striving for peace we're going in the wrong direction you know beautifully said and as you said, it's you know definitely the season where you kind of wave that flag. I mean, there are so many great stories in history of, of even warring sides. You know, for a day they just set down their guns or, or whatever. You know, eh, literal or yeah. metaphorical guns, and and you know walk to the line. Yeah, it seems like the season where the the, the, the it's it's never more appropriate to to think about it and uh, think about the concept of, of trying to be good to each other and uh, and get along with each other and not not look for the differences as much as possibly we forget to look for the similarities you know well i always appreciate what you're doing especially when you're saying things like that uh looking forward to this one season of peace the christmas collection uh michael mcdonald again thank you so much for taking the time for this thanks kyle and thanks for coming down to the show i hope to see you again soon uh, absolutely we'll see you around take care all right buddy take care all right bye my thanks to michael mcdonald for the call once again season of peace the christmas collection is now out If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening from right now. iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. After that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. You can also find some bonus episodes of this series. You can find me at Twitter at Kyle Meredith, Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. That's it for this episode. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.